guys, listen up. When I quote to you, what do I quote to you? Do I say you should not believe in Jesus because of the Talmud? Would I ever say that to you? If you're a Christian or you're just not sure what to believe, you'd go, I don't find that very persuasive. That's silly. I would never do that. And what do I always say to you? Look it up for yourself. The King James Bible was commissioned in 1607. And 47 Christian scholars from Cambridge, Oxford, translated the entire Bible, what they consider the Bible, into the English language. And it is by far the most popular translation of the Bible. Now, they really were using the Tyndale Bible, they use it, but they, but one of the things that the translators did was in the preface. Now, n no one I know reads the preface to the King James. So there's actually a preface that was written by these 47 men who were members of the Church of England. They write this in the preface they explained why they went to the Hebrew to translate rather than the Septuagint. And they have a whole section on this, and that is they explain exactly what I shared with you, that as it turns out, there are so many Greek translations all calling themselves the Septuagint, and as it turns out, they're, they're not reliable. So I, I hope you get this point. Since the King James was created in, seven, in the 17th century, there have been hundreds of translations of the Bible into the English language, like the NIV translated in the 20th century. What they, what they did not do was call themselves the King James Bible. That would make things very confusing, right? They called themselves the New American Standard, right? They gave themselves other names. But that's not what happened to all the, these Greek translations. All these Greek translations that were subsequently produced, they called them this. They called the translation the Septuagint. They just kept using that name, so everyone just called it a Septuagint, and that's what makes it very confusing for you. You know, that's interesting. You brought that up because that was actually the next caller that actually hung up. Um, he cut short. It says, how do you deal with Christians who disregard the Hebrew and prefer to stick with King Jimmy or what are the other ones are? Listen, are you being told that Jesus is the Messiah because of the Septuagint? No. They, like, I'm just showing you just how not to get ripped off. It's all that simple. And I'm just saying, just... Ask the Christian who's trying to convert you to Christianity, stick with the Hebrew Bible. Just stick with the Hebrew Bible. Please don't talk to me about the Talmud. And this is what goes on constantly, and it's, and it's, and it's, it's madness because the exact same channels on YouTube, you know who they are, they attack the Talmud without pause. They, they are fierce opponents of the Talmud, yet they use the Talmud to prove Jesus, and you go— Stop. I need some equal weights and measurements. They use a midrashic right. Why are they doing that? Because there is no verse like the Messiah will die and rise on the third day according to the Scripture, as you're told in the Christian Bible in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, Luke 24, 43, 46. If you can just say, I don't want a Septuagint, and I don't want to look at the Talmud. I just want to look at the Hebrew Bible. You're going to be fine. Just all that other stuff is all I, – I say this. I feel like I say this on every show. When a magician cuts a lady in half, she's put in a box. Why, why is she placed in a box? When a magician on stage makes a ball levitate, well – a bull levitating in the air without anything going on or a person levitating is impossible. Why? Because it violates the laws of thermodynamics. You can't just produce new energy. It just is not your – you might smile and chuckle and say, well, that's cute. I wonder how he did that. But you're not thinking 
the laws of thermodynamics have been suspended for the benefit of my entertainment. Please <laughs> use the same um, aggressive <laughs> way of dismissing this. Use the same algorithm to dismiss this kind of magic show. It is a magic show, but, but with missionaries, they're claiming it's real. So if the Talmud is not the word of God, then why use it? Why not quote? Like when I quote, guys, listen up. When I quote to you, what do I quote to you? Do I say you should not believe in Jesus because of the Talmud? Would I ever say that to you? Well, you would, if you're a Christian or you're just not sure what to believe, you'd go, I don't find that very persuasive. That's silly. I would never do that. And what do I always say to you? Look it up for yourself. How are you going to look up 72 volumes of the Talmud for yourself? And the Talmud does not have a very high view of Jesus or Christianity. So if that's an authoritative source and you understand what's going on, oh, I mean, you don't want to be lied to again in your life. Aren't you tired? Aren't you exhausted of you know, people messing with your head? And here we're talking about your relationship with God. If you enjoyed this program, please like and subscribe. Thank <laughs> you.